To a lot of people, ambition is kind of a mystery. The dictionary says it's an eager desire for distinction, power, or fame. But what does that really mean? Let's start with the word eager. All by itself, eager is kind of exciting. Because how I see it, living a better life, having a better family, and making a lot of money takes an eager desire. We have the remarkable ability to get exactly what we must have. But there is a difference between wishes and desires. In order to lose weight, we have to start with a desire to exercise a little more and eat a little less. I'm sure you've heard people talk about wishing they had more money to pay the bills. But before their lifestyle can change, their wish needs to become a desire. The backbone of an eager desire to change is discipline. True ambition is disciplined, eager desire. If I want a better life tomorrow, I need to start working on it today. Ambition is a minute-by-minute, day-by-day mentality. To have the ambition to work towards a better family life, a newer car, a bigger house, a financially secure future. You have to move toward it every moment. If living a successful life was easy, I'm sure more people would be successful. If just being ambitious was enough, I'm sure all of the broke and perplexed people in the world would not be broke and perplexed. While most people spend most of their lives struggling to earn a living, a much smaller number seem to have everything going their way. Instead of just earning a living, the smaller group is busily working at building and enjoying a fortune. Everything just seems to work out for them. On the other hand, there sits the much larger group, wondering in awe how life can be so unfair, complicated, and unjust. So what is the major difference between the little group with so much and the larger group with so little? Despite all the factors that affect our lives, like the kind of parents we have, the schools we attended, the part of the country we grew up in, none has as much potential power for doing good as the ability to dream. Dreams are a projection of the kind of life we want to lead. Dreams can drag you. Dreams can make you skip over obstacles. When we allow our dreams to pull us, they unleash a creative force that can overpower everything in our way. To unleash this power, your dreams must be well-defined. A fuzzy future vision has little power. Well-defined dreams are not fuzzy. To really achieve your dreams, your dreams must be vivid. If you have ever seen a 14,000-foot peak in the Rocky Mountains, one thought has surely come to mind. How did the settlers of this country do it? How did they get from the East Coast to the West Coast by foot, carrying one day's supply of food and water? Can you imagine hauling all of your worldly goods with you mile after mile, day after day, month after month? These people had dreams. Big ones. They had ambition. They didn't focus on the hardship of getting up the mountain. In their minds, they were already on the other side. Their physical bodies just had not gotten them to the other side yet. Despite all of their pains and struggles, births and deaths along the way, those who made it to the other side had a single vision to reach the land of continuous sunshine and extraordinary wealth. You've got to be a dreamer. You've got to see the future finished in advance. You've got to see California while you're climbing 14,000 foot peaks. You've got to see the finish line while you're running the race. You got to hear the cheaters when you're in the middle of a monster project and you've got to be willing to put yourself through the paces of doing the uncomfortable until it becomes comfortable. Because that is how you realize your dreams. Dreams are what caused thousands of people to leave their homes and families and start over. In a land where anything was possible. To this day, dreams continue to bring people to our land of opportunity, to a country where you can start with little and end up with a lot. Ben Franklin gave us three principles of success and ambition that have withstood the test of time. Number one. Happiness doesn't come from big pieces of great success, but from small advantages hammered out day by day. What Mr. Franklin is saying here is that we must be happy with what we've got. We must be happy while in pursuit of what we want. You won't be any happier when you reach your goals than you are right now. It just doesn't work that way. Whether you're on your way, whether you've already gotten there, you'll be as happy as you make up your mind to be now, right now. Ben Franklin's second principle said that life is plastic. Within each of us is the power to mold ourselves and mold our environment. It's up to each of us to begin this molding process with a final product in mind, and it is within our power to work it and form it. Every minute, every day, every month, every year. By using your mind and your abilities and your attitude to work a little each day on molding your life, you'll soon see how magnificent your power is to gain those small advantages each day, the little steps it takes to build up to success. Principle number three is success is a pleasure. If what you are doing today isn't satisfying and gratifying, guess what? You're really not successful. If you are not fulfilled with what you are doing today, you cannot possibly be successful. It doesn't matter how many worldly possessions you may have, how many cars, how many toys, how much money. If you're not happy with your life as it is, you cannot be successful. I know that success is a relative term. It means different things to different people. But the one thing you will hear from everyone who is successful is that they are happy with who they are and what they are doing. 
that are happy and satisfied. What have you done today that makes this day successful? Think about it and write it down. If at the end of the day you can jot down the things that have made it a good day, you will soon see patterns forming. This really is a good habit to get into. When you can see a pattern of pleasure, you will know you are on the road to success. Success is measured through pleasure. You've got to be happy along the way. You've got to learn to give yourself a pat on the back. Tell yourself, I'm proud of me. Today, you've got to strive to be happy. You've got to learn to enjoy the process. These are really common sense ideas. Another American great, William James, was one of the most notable philosophers and psychologists in our history, and he founded a philosophy called pragmatism. To be pragmatic is to be practical. To test the validity of a concept by its practical results. To actually question something and rate its usefulness by what it can do for you. To hear a method of doing something and figuring out if it's even worth your while. One of the issues Mr. James dealt with in his lifetime was this. What does it mean to be a success? William James described success as a combination of two things. Number one, an inner ideal which is followed persistently with courage. And number two, an outer achievement related to that ideal. William James' second part to success dealt with the outer achievement related to that ideal. You need both aspects to really be a success. But what Dr. James realized about his philosophy of success was that the first part is indeed more important than the second. Going for it. As long as you're working toward your inner goal, then success is possible. But once you give up your inner vision, then you can never become successful. Maybe the person who's been working on a project for 10 years can be successful in his own right. If he's honestly working toward it, doing everything to make himself worthy of reaching the dream, really happy with where he is doing it. Within the process of doing, maybe he is a success. It's a personal thing, going for it one step at a time, going for small accomplishments along the way, for however long it takes. So let's think about this for a moment. What outside evidence or results or proof can be seen when you accomplish your goals one step at a time? You'll start to see things change around you, little everyday things. Things you may not even notice unless you are paying attention. If you're one of those who'd rather stay up late and get up late only to discover that your workplace doesn't fit your schedule and you roll out of bed cursing the alarm clock every morning, maybe you could start with a little change of going to bed half an hour earlier than normal. Maybe you'll find out that you jump out of bed in a better mood and that your day will start better and that you'll get more done and that the people around you that cause you problems aren't so hard to work with after all. Maybe, through small changes, you can adjust your life to work for you. One step at a time, day by day, month by month, year by year.